So I was not correct about the men's GP Plue last week. It did not end at a sprint, and the winner was... Wait for it. Sylvain Chavanel. In my defense, even Chavanel didn't think he'd win. He, like I did, anticipated the race would be a sprint. And Alexander Kristoff, the guy who I thought would win, did take the group gallop. It was just for 8th place instead of 1st. Chavanel is kind of making up for a quiet season recently, as this is his second big win in as many weeks. He took the Tour poitou Charent earlier, which I didn't talk about because it was too underground. I mean not just in the sense that it's too hipster, but in that there were neither pictures nor a report from the race on the Cycling News website. Maybe they mistook it for a women's race. Speaking of, the Bulls Rentals Ladies Tour is underway, not to be confused with the Bulls Rentals Holland Hills Classic, which took place in May and has a fiendishly similar URL and site layout. Ellen Van Dyke of Bulls Domans, yes, that very same Bulls, took the prologue, and Lisa Brenauer of the women's team you have just a few more hours to support directly took the second stage. My guess would be the third place finisher Mariana Voss was a little tired, having apparently spent the previous night rooting through Davis Finney's closet. The Ogley Thief would have her revenge, winning yesterday's third stage while Brenauer finished outside the time bonuses in fourth. This leaves the German champ in the very unusual position of being tied on time with the GC leader and tied on points with the sprints leader without actually being in front in either of the two competitions. But I suppose it does relieve Brunauer of having to explain to Anglophone fans the sprint jersey, which is prominently sponsored by Baby <laughs> Which is prominently sponsored by Baby Dumb. <laughs> I'm 12. Which is prominently sponsored by Baby Dump, a Dutch retailer of early childhood supplies. Speaking of sponsored clothing, today's shirt donor is the Grand Fondo New England, which takes place in Providence, Rhode Island as part of the world-class KMC Cyclocross Festival. The Fondo offers courses of 27, 64, and 103 miles, covering as many as three states, and features New England's own Cannondale Pro Cycling Team member, Ted King. Plus, all courses finish in the Harpoon Brewery Beer Garden in time to watch the elite UCI cyclocross races. The event takes place October 5th, but register by September 15th to receive a complimentary t-shirt and a custom bib number. Orders for commemorative jerseys must be placed by September 9th. Full details at the link in the video description. Obviously, we're going to hold off on the Vuelta again until Monday, but spoiler alert, there are elbows. Actually, that kind of looks like a punch in spirit, especially since Lampre's Max Ricchesi doesn't really have any chance of getting into the line. He's just venting. Did he get relegated for that? No? Well, at least the Vuelta is being consistent in its non-enforcement. At the Tour of Alberta, that, that has got to be a typo. Al Alberta? No, apparently that's accurate. Banff, oil sands, and a bike race. Have fun with those transfers. Anyway, Giant Shimano's Tom Dumoulin currently leads the Tour of Alberta on the strength of his prologue performance. This is despite not featuring near the front of either of the group finishes so far, won by Bissell Development's Ruben Zapunka and Dumoulin's giant Shimano teammate Jonas Allstrand, respectively. I want to note that Dumoulin's fairly massive win on Tuesday, some 14 seconds on a 4km course, was accomplished on a time trial rig. In fact, despite a technical and climbing course, all three of the top finishers chose to ride on TT bikes. I bring this up to highlight the importance of aerodynamics and as evidence that the next person to attempt the UCI hour record, Jens Vogt, will almost certainly take it. Not because he's stronger than or even as strong as the current record holders, but because the UCI made it really, really easy. Someone on Twitter claimed that this is kind of correcting the UCI's stopping of progress with the banning of the Superman position, but that's not a new thing. In 1933, Francis Fleur beat Oscar Egg's hour record time on a recumbent bike, before the UCI decided that that didn't count. I mean, how are we supposed to know which UCI stoppings of progress we're supposed to pay attention to? And honestly, even the current hour record is pretty arbitrary. Francesco Mosier's bike, for example, wasn't a Superman rig, didn't even have aero bars, and probably doesn't offer much more of an aerodynamic advantage than a modern pursuit bike. Why shouldn't Mosier's 51k record be the mark Jens has to beat? I mean, other than that whole blood doping thing. Look, the point is that after a flurry of interest earlier in the year, as the season winds down, there still isn't a single active pro with solid plans to target the hour record. And like I said in June, it's because it doesn't make any sense to do it. No working professional can afford to spend months training to be the first rider to collect a $0 prize for a record the UCI is simply going to water down again in another 10 years. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike. <laughs>